Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to um, the fifth general body meeting with Myers. Um, today, we're going to like talk about some announcements. Um, so we're going to start off with like introductions, info sessions, fundraisers, um, the scholarship, membership, office positions, social medias, and then we'll like um, transition to the guest speaker. So we're going to start with introductions. So hello, everyone. <laughs> Again, I'm Michael Jaime, if you don't know by now. Um, I'm a fourth year chemical engineering student. I'm this year's co-president of 2020 to 2021 alongside Victoria Bravo. Um, my emphasis is wastewater treatment. Um, some of my interests include concerts, going to concerts, drinking boba, um, tea. On the left side, you can see like images of me, me and my dog, me at a mosh pit, and just a professional pick of me. Um, my hobbies include drinking your mate um, and kombucha, like officer meetings or anywhere I go to and buggy my dog. <laughs> um, some um, of the best parts about my is like um, the people you meet, so like professionals, alumni, and just like friends. Um, also, it's like um, a great way to like have a supporting community and like develop your career development and academic skills. Yes, and I'll be presenting with my partner in crime today, Byron Merlos. Everyone, um, if you don't know, I'm Byron. Uh, I'm the director of social activities for Mayas this year. Um, it's my fourth year. I'm a chemical engineering major. Um, some things that I'm interested in are video games, sports, music, go Dodgers, finally. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, some hobbies I like to do is um, I play lacrosse for the, the school. And um, I've been playing lacrosse. I'm lacrosse, obviously. I've been playing ukulele and guitar a lot since, um, you know, we've been stuck home at home in quarantine. Um, I also like to go for bike rides to the beach. And um, yeah, um, the thing I like best about Maya's is um, everyone is really supportive and pretty much they'll like always cheer you on, always help you out with anything you need. You know, if you're feeling down, you just talk to someone from Maya's and they'll lift you with your spirits. It's really great community. So moving on. Um, Next week on November 18th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., we will have a aeros an aerospace company um, info session. And they're just gonna like um, discuss um, some of the topics they go through or like um, technicals um, stuff. And they're gonna talk about the revolution of space. And this is hosted by um, Mize and Ship along that. Um, there's a QR code, so you can like um, scan to register. And I believe it's limited. And this is gonna be ho hosted by Zoom. I'll just like give like two seconds or like five seconds for people to scan that. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to that. Um, so, I want to like say thank you to everyone who's been supporting the organization. Um, as you may know, we have this fundraiser, which is Krispy Kreme. This has been done by Jessica, our um, director of development. I would like to give recognition to her. She's been like doing a great job about this. Um, some of the profits will go to the scholarship, which I will talk about like in a bit. Um, this fundraiser has been extended to this Friday, um, Friday the 13th. Yes, that look day. Yeah, so get your donuts while they're hot. <laughs> oh, also um, uh, for the donuts, you could also like um, order them online and it's Yes. Wait, when's the last day for that? Um, Friday the 13th. Okay, Okay, we also have new Maya's windbreakers that are for sale on our website as well. They're $50 um, windbreaker included, and all the profits that we get from that are going to go to the end of the semester scholarship, one that Michael will be talking about in a bit. Please get them. It's cool. It's getting a lot cooler, you know, break the wind with the with stylus in your jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, so scholarship. Um so the scholarship, um, this is for like people who are like struggling financially or like people that just need um, 
money. Uh, so the requirements for this is like, um, you must be a signed up membership member on their website, um, maintain the 2.5 cumulative um, GP at the end of fall 2020 semester. Um, the ticket system is, um, you'll be able to obtain um, tickets by going to general body meetings, socials, fundraisers, and events. Just um, show like proof if you attended and like sign up for the form Sebastian like has shared in the chat. Um, what's he called? The award is like $125 and there, there only could be like three winners and they'll be announced um, spring semester, the first general body meeting. If you have any questions, um, reach out to info at cos2obmias.org. Oh yeah, membership, um, this is how you are entered into the raffle, or the raffle, the scholarship raffle. Um, feel free to join, it's $10 online. You can go to um, the, our website to find um, where to sign up. Um, it's $10 and it also includes membership to, to ship. So you get two for the price of one essentially. And um, it's a really um, it's a really good deal because um, both clubs help you with professional development and they they help you just, both clubs help you really greatly. And if you wanna, I would really recommend joining just cause it'll help you um, in your career in the future. Yeah. Yes. Moving on. Uh, we still have open office position. Um, this is just to like build your resume, gain experience by applying as an officer. This will like help you um, improve your soft skills like communication, leadership skills, and other stuff. And the um, positions we have is director of outreach, uh, specifically high school outreach. And we do have two director of recruitment. Um, you could like scan the code. Um, I believe it's like on our like Instagram, so you could look back on that. Also the, what's it called? The QR code for the aerospace info session. We'll like post that in a bit too. You can check out our social media as well. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Discord, YouTube, and we just made a Twitter as well. So go follow us for, for updates on the club, any internship opportunities, you know, info sessions as well. And if you guys don't want to take a picture of that, we also made a link tree that you can just find all of that in one place. So feel free to scan that so you know where to find us. Like a one minute. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, you could like um, either find us on csulbmice.org or like send us an email or like we can, um, answer questions like towards the end of the meeting. And without further ado, um, give a warm welcome to Eduardo Ugalde. All right, so I'll be presenting on tips for excelling at your full-time job or internship. Um, for those that don't know, my name is Eduardo Ugalde. I graduated from Cal State Long Beach in 2015 um, with a degree in mechanical engineering. I was uh ambassador for one year and then secretary for um i think my last year um so yeah i was involved in mias throughout college and helped me out a lot so i'm currently in, uh involved in the mias professional chapter um so if you're about to graduate and you're interested in continuing to be involved uh reach out to me um so yeah uh with that being said uh we'll begin so let's see. Uh, so you, you basically landed your job or internship and there's like so much that goes into, into your mind. You have initial positive thoughts. You have thoughts of determination. You wanna impress your supervisor, your team, and you wanna build up your brand so that people want you on their team. And ultimately, if you're on the internship side of things, then you wanna you know, get an offer to come back as a full-time employee. If you're a full-time employee, your determination is like continue building and working your way up to a, a promotion. Um, on the flip side though, uh, there are some nervous thoughts. You might be thinking like, oh, like I got this job offer, cool, I'm so excited. But then at the same time, like after that settles out, settles in, the next train of thought might be like, oh, am I good enough? Did I get lucky to get this position? 
Um, what happens if I can't solve the problems that they give me? Um, this leads to something called imposter syndrome, which I mean, I'm just gonna read the, the definition that I got from the Harvard Business Review, which is a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evidence, success, imposter suffer from chronic self-doubt and a sense of intellectual fraudulence that overrides any feeling of success or external proof of their com competence. So um, basically you feel like you don't belong there. So some thoughts that you might have is everyone here seems so much smarter. Uh, I just graduated from Cal State. Everyone here graduated with more prestigious universities, UCs, Ivy Leagues. Some have masters or PhDs. And you might have work that's really challenging and you might be thinking like, oh, is this uh, for everyone? Like, is it is it easy for everyone else? And it's just difficult for me. Um, and then you might be thinking, why do I bring up imposter syndrome? Um, I'm starting off the presentation with feels because that could determine how you perform at work. And big reason I'm starting off with imposter syndrome is because I experienced it myself. So this was taken like in 2016, I believe, when I started working at Northrop Grumman. Um, I seem all happy and, and like learning, I guess. But inside I was like nervous, like, am I doing this right? Uh, everyone else here is like from UCs, have masters and it, it takes a toll at you. So I just wanted to make sure that I, I brought that up in case you have that feeling when you start your internship or full-time offer. Then know that you're, you're not alone in having this thought um, and just like acknowledge it. And, and ultimately shift your mindset to have one that's more triumphant. So if you have challenging work, just tell yourself like you're gonna put in the work to overcome it. Um, if you feel like the underdog, like in my case, I worked at North, or I'm still working at North of Bremen, but when I started everybody in my same, I guess, uh, class or people that got hired at the same time as me, like they graduated from UC, some had masters and I just had a bachelor's from Cal State. So I felt like I'm um, like an underdog everyone here is so much smarter. Um, but ultimately I told myself I was gonna put in the work and I was gonna prove to myself that I got hired here because of skills and work ethic and not just because of luck. Um, so that was a quick initial talk about feelings. Um, I guess I didn't really talk about how I was gonna break down this presentation. I'm gonna start off with emotions, then tools, then relationship building then workflows, and then ultimately just self-care. So yeah, sorry, I'm like going all over the place. Um, so with that said, let's now focus on to when you actually start working. So like day one, um, actually you should start before you even begin. And how can you start before? A quick email. Um, you want to get a head start in, the, in your career, you can do this by just sending out an email to your manager and just saying, hey, I'm like, I got hired. This is my start date. Um, I want to know like, hey, what tools or subjects should I study up on so that I'm ready to start running since day one? This is going to help you in two ways. It's going to help you so you can better prepare yourself um, on, the, on day one compared to your peers. And then it also makes work a little bit easier because if they say like, hey, you're gonna use this tool, you've already like done some YouTube or some research on that tool. So you're more familiar with the user interface and how to go about doing things. Or if you're using a certain subject from your, like your studies a lot in that internship or full-time off uh, position, you're more refreshed on like that, that information. And then ultimately it leaves a positive impression to your manager. I could, um, I can tell you like I did this and like a year later when I had my uh, performance review and the manager was like, hey, like really like that you reached out to me uh, before you even started and ensure that you're very determined and like a hardworking individual. So internship full-time offer, highly recommend just sending a quick email. Um, if you don't know who your hiring manager is, talk to HR and say like, hey, I would like to reach out to my hiring manager if it's possible. Um, get that information and then just introduce yourself if you haven't yet so already. Um, and then just tell them like, or her like, hey, um, I wanna see what you recommend for me to study up on. Okay, so now it's actually day one. So day one, you'll be introduced to people. You might get straight to work. Um, at the same time, you'll probably get bombarded with a bunch of like 
notes or acronyms, uh, people to meet, bunch of information for onboarding purposes and then also for, for your project itself. Um, so you really need to have a system to help capture all this. So I highly recommend uh, notebooks, um, digital tools to help capture and gather this information so you can process it. So the information you're gonna have to capture, um, at least I'm speaking on the aerospace side of things is um, like you have to capture names, acronyms, assignments, like any random stuff that comes up, like, hey, this is your, this is um, X. He's gonna be working on your team and his, he's a thermal engineer. And if you have questions, talk to this person. So you just capture this information or like, hey, you're gonna be working on this program and they use some acronym. And then they tell you what the acronym stands for, just write it all down. And then once you have all this information written down, you're able to process it. And then from there, you're able to stay organized and then find information uh, readily available and then take action. Like if somebody asks you a question, you just go through your notes, say, oh, it's this, and then you respond, or you can take action based on, on whatever is requested from you. Um, so there's two methods, there's analog and digital. For analog, you can't be pen and paper, um, or notebook and pen. Um, I personally recommend using a system called bullet journaling. I'm not gonna really talk about it in this presentation, um, but this is something that you can do a YouTube, Google search, and you'll find a bunch of videos of setting up your bullet journal system. Um, I guess just to promote it, um, it's it's like a way of like you writing down all this information, but staying organized. Think of like your notes, but with a table of content um, and it has like um, some structure to it, but it's also very freeing at the same time. Um, I like to nerd out about like exact tools. So I, I personally like to use this brand called Lurch Term 1917. I get their seven by 10 inch dotted uh, notebook. And then I just use a Pilot G2.038 black ink pen in case anyone wants to like take notes on that. Um, so that's the analog side of things. On the digital side of things, I recommend using OneNote. I mean, I personally don't like this a lot, but it's something that like every company has, um, at least for the aerospace side of things, we can't really just use any note taking tool or any software tool because of security reasons. Um, so OneNote, it's like readily available. It's already pre-installed along with all the Microsoft suite items or software tools. Um, and then I recommend staying organized with OneNote using PARA method, um, which I'll talk about later on. But uh, I guess just a quick preview, PARA stands for Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archives. Um, but I'll talk more about it uh, in upcoming slides. Um, and on top of note taking tools, you're gonna use a bunch of tools geared towards your specific information. Uh, role. So depending on what company you're at, what's your role, you're gonna have a suite of tools that you have to use. Some of you more than others, and it's a lot of information to learn. Um, so you can learn the fundamentals, uh, but what I highly recommend you do after you learn the fundamentals, like the basics of every tool, is you apply the 80-20 rule, but on learning your tools. So 80-20 rules is like 20% of something leads to 80% of the results. Um, so in this case, what 20% of tools do you use 80% of the time? Um, when you identify those, you want to learn those really well. So like learn the features, learn the keyboard shortcuts, um, anything that, that is about that tool, learn it really well. Um, I'm not saying you have to like master it, but just be more familiar with it than your average user. Uh, for me personally, that's Creo Pro E. Um, that's our 3D modeling software that we use at our site. And I use Microsoft Outlook. I'm sure a lot of people use Microsoft Outlook. And then Microsoft Excel for like going through data and um, parts list and all those other stuff. Uh, so for me, like I learned the keyboard shortcuts, it helps me use the tools faster and then it helps you be more efficient um, and saves you a lot of time. Okay, so we covered tools. Uh, now, like I said in the beginning, now we'll go into relationship building. Um, you basically, you're not gonna be working by yourself. So you should be good working with other people, mentors, eventually you'll have mentees, uh, team members. So it's really good to have good emotional intelligence uh, with working with others. So going back to this picture, at this stage you're entering work and you don't really know anyone, you feel by yourself. You might know some people, but I'm just gonna assume that you don't. Uh, so you're basically a new person in, a new area. 
So first thing you'll probably get introduced to team members. Um, when you do, going back to the note taking tool, that's why I made sure to talk about that in the beginning. Note where they sit, note their role. So if like, hey, this is John, he's a systems engineer and he's gonna be supporting you in your X project, then make a note of it, where does he sit? And then when you get introduced and if you know that this is a person you're gonna be interacting with a lot or somewhat, ask them, hey, what's the best time for me to reach you about questions? And then follow that up with, uh, what's your preferred method of communication? So when you start work, people, um, depending on where you work, um, at least at our site, we have flexible schedule. Um, so like some people might come in earlier, some people might come in later. Some people like to like have their morning hours just to themselves and then answer questions in the evening or vice versa. Um, and then people are in different age, uh, age groups. So some people like, don't really like instant messengers where other people like that's a preferred method of communication. Um, so talk to people and then find out more about them. And if they're going to be a key person that you have to interact with, um, it's good uh, information to, to jot down so that um, you basically want to work what, with what's best for them because you know, you're new to the block. Um, so uh, kind of be respectful. And that leads on to your basically common golden advice that's you probably hear all the time, you know, be respectful, dress appropriately based on the company culture at your site, and then show up to work on time. Um, over time, once you build up more brand and uh, people know you more, then uh, maybe you can like dress less formally. Um, and maybe you have a flexible work schedule. So maybe they'll like let you come in later, earlier, or whatever. Uh, but in the beginning, um, just follow the rules to a T and then as you become more like familiar with your company culture site and everything then then that's when you can start like you know uh, being less formal uh, but that's totally up to you another thing that comes up is you're gonna have questions um, so a general rule of thumb that I like to follow is like spend 15 minutes to try to solve the problem before you start asking people for help um, it shows that you put in effort um, and you're not just like, oh, I'm stuck, I'm gonna go ask for help. And then if you're stuck for more than 15 minutes, you don't wanna like waste your whole day on one problem that one person could answer in like a minute. So at that point, you know, uh, contact somebody who you were introduced to, um, a coworker, a project team member, and then just ask them and say, hey, I'm trying to figure this out, this is what I did, but I'm still stuck. Uh, what should I do or what do you recommend? Um, you don't want to be the person that is always asking for help when it's a quick Google search um, because then people notice that and then people might get annoyed. So that's a good rule of thumb. So that was a quick uh, talk about uh, relationships. Um, next thing is workflows. So at work, you're going to be working. So you want to make sure you have a system in place where you can be efficient with your time and get your stuff done before deadlines. Um, Cause when deadline, deadline season approaches, uh, it can get stressful. Um, but if you have a good solid workflow, then it helps you um, not stress too much. Uh, but I can't guarantee it's not gonna eliminate all your stress. So going into workflows, um, everyone's workflow is different depending on like what's your preferences. Um, but it's good to test different things and see what works and what doesn't. Um, so leverage tools and routines to help you produce more. Uh, finding out what works best for you helps you create less friction um, on getting uh, to work and getting things done. It helps boost your performance. And then, like I mentioned before, uh, it, it's always constantly changing. Like you'll do this and it works well for you, but then you realize after a moment, like, oh, this works better for me or, oh, it stopped working for me. Um, you might experience this when you do your homework when you study for tests, um, any school related projects or homework assignments, basically, uh, you might find out like, hey, if I work at this location, I feel more productive or more efficient, or when I get this much amount of sleep, I feel better or whatever. So it's always an experiment, no, but it's good to be proactive about it. So uh, one thing I highly recommend to improve your workflow is a task manager. Um, it's basically a place where you store all your tasks that you need to do and you don't forget. Uh, your brain is like good at coming up with ideas, but it's not the best at storing information. So that's where just a simple pen and paper or a digital tool um, will help you 
kind of jot down what you need to do and deadlines and all that information. Um, you can create a task list based on project. So don't just have one general task list. Break it down based on projects or areas. Um, so that's where Para comes in, but I'll talk about it um, in the future, a couple of slides. Um, you can use Microsoft Outlook. They have a task manager section. Um, it's not like the best, but like I said, it's like you make do with what you have. Uh, pen and paper, and then digital, there's like one note. Um, so experiment based on what's available to you. Uh, but I highly recommend writing down your tasks um, so that you don't have to worry about like, oh, what was the thing that I have to do again? You just look at your list and say, oh, this is the thing that I have to do. Uh, so now I talked about PARA. Now this slide um, basically goes more into it. Um, PARA is basically a method for sorting your information. Like I mentioned before, it's projects, areas, resources, and archives. And you basically follow this framework. So think of it, think of it like four different folders. In OneNote, it would be four different notebooks. Um, and then like, let's say your project is to design a chair or something. Then that, let's say chair project would go under your projects folder. Let's say you're involved in an employee resource group, which is like kind of the equivalent of like your organization at college. So it would be an area. Um, so that would have its own folder under the areas folder. Let's say there's a, a handbook that they give you for um, design processes that you should reference. That's a resource. So you'd store that in your resource folder. And then archive, let's say something becomes irrelevant. Like let's say you finish the chair design project. Once you're done, then you move that subfolder into your archive. And this is a good way to keep tabs on like storing your information without it being super very messy all over the place because it's so easy just to like save it to desktop and then eventually your desktop's going to look like a mess and it's going to be very hard to find things. Um, so this is a simple method. You basically use it um, on your desktop, Google Drive, uh, OneNote, wherever you think this is applicable, you can use a simple um, structure to organize information based on projects, your roles outside of projects, uh, resources that are good to reference. Um, and then anything that becomes irrelevant, you just archive it. Uh, so yeah. Next is the Pomodoro technique. Um, so this is something that I learned about like probably like late into college, which I wish I learned about sooner. Um, it's basically a good technique for balancing work, focus time versus like breaks. So when we work, we just feel like we should work indefinitely, but kind of like you go to the gym and then you, do like a hundred pushups. You don't, I mean, your average person does not do a hundred pushups like straight up at once. They'll probably do like 10 pushups and then take a break, 10 pushups and then take a break. Um, similar to when you work, you like mentally like tax yourself uh, by working for X amount of minutes uh, and then you take a break and then you repeat that, that process. So that your standard default Pomodoro technique is 25 minutes of work, five minutes rest. 25 minutes of work, five minutes rest. And then you do that. Uh, three times, and then you notice um, at the last one, uh, you have a 15 minute break. So after if you put in like an hour, you take a longer break. Um, this is your standard default. Uh, for me, I generally do like one hour work and then 15 or 10 minute break, um, but experiment. Like sometimes I'll do like 90 minutes and then 20 minutes break. Um, whatever works best for you. Um, but it's something that I personally uh, like to do and have uh, gotten good benefit from it. So yeah, consider it uh, including it into your workflow. Next is time blocking. Um, think of this as like, you know, how you look at your calendar, you have like a meeting, but instead of just putting meetings on your calendar, uh, think of putting like everything that you do, like this task, I'm gonna work on it from this time to this time. And then from this time to this other time, I'll work on this other task. And it helps you get uh, a visual of how your day is going to play out um, instead of just a list of tasks and all the only thing in your calendar is meetings. Um, so that way you know exactly what you should be doing by when. Um, and it gives you, it helps you give yourself more time. Sorry, give yourself more time so you can like actually start to work instead of thinking, what should I be doing? You kind of already plan out your day. So here's a quick example. Um, I just put some random stuff together. So like, for example, here I have work from nine to four and then from four to 4.30, 
commute to apartment, 4.30 to 5, get ready, and then 5 to 6, the, this presentation. Uh, but for work, you'd be like 9 to 10, work on X, 10 to 11, uh, work on Y, 11 to 11.30, lunch, um, and so on. Uh, this is good because like you'll create your list of tasks, and then from there, you can start blocking out time on your day to be more realistic of what you could get done in that day. Next is music. Um, I personally, one of the best investments I've bought since I've graduated is a noise canceling headphones. Um, I have Sony WH-1000 uh, M3s. The naming convention's not the best, um, but there's like the Bose. These are on the pricier side, um, but you could, you don't have to use it. It's just something that if you have the funds, I'd recommend checking or considering it. Um, and you don't have to listen to music. You can just have it and then just noise canceling so you have no music or music. And same thing goes, you can just buy those earplugs and then just put them so that you don't like hear any noise at all. Um, another method is you can, if you do like listening to music, uh, have the same song on repeat. It's like a weird thing where it becomes like white noise in a sense, but it's like a song you like. So then it it uh, makes you feel good. Um, generally, they don't recommend with lyrics, uh, but sometimes I like to listen to like Interpol uh, on repeat, like a specific song, um, and that has lyrics. Uh, so I don't know, just test it out. And then there's like services that claim to make you more focused. So like brain.fm is a service that I sign up for. There's also a playlist on Spotify, like if you type in focus, um, they claim to like help you improve your focus, test it out, see if it works out for you or not. For me personally, like I like brain.fm. Um, it's a subscription service, but I think it's worth it. But they have like uh, try it out for five sessions and then decide if it's right for you or not. So yeah. Um, so workflows and routines, basically I just told you a bunch of like either tools or techniques. Um, you kind of put these together and you create a workflow, a routine. Um, and then from there, it's like a bunch of Lego pieces and you put it together to build one, one giant piece. And then over time you can swap out parts. Um, and then it helps you just, like I said, be on top of your game. Um, so that you kind of don't miss your deadlines, I mean, it's not gonna guarantee you're not gonna miss your deadline, but it's help increase your chances. And like I said, it's gonna constantly change as you like learn what works, what doesn't, some things work for X amount of period and then they stop working. Um, so yeah. So just to run through my uh, current start of the day routine, um, I go into work, I check my email, I review my tasks, I use Microsoft Outlook. Um, I see what is re still relevant. Like maybe I got an email that's like super urgent. So therefore like that takes priority over everything else. After I have my list of tasks that I want to get done, then I time block my day um, to like what I think I could get done. And then I put on my noise canceling headphones. I listen to Brain FM or same song on repeat. And then I start working. And then I'll do a Pomodoro. Like I'll work for an hour, take a 10 minute break. Um, and then I'll do that. And then towards the end of the day, I'll just check my emails again. Um, do one last like sweep of my emails to see like, hey, is there anything that I missed or anything that I should like be aware of? Um, I list out tasks that I want to complete for tomorrow. Again, I do this in Microsoft Outlook. Um, that way when I come into work the next day, I already have a list of things I want to get done in the order I would like to get it done. This doesn't always play out, but it's good to be like prepared. Um, and then from there, I also like to check when the first meeting is for the next day. Um, since we don't have a set amount of time or set time we have to come in, we have more flexibility, but they want us to hit our meetings, like go to our meetings. So if I have a super early meeting, then I need to make sure that I come in earlier at work um, in order to attend that meeting. Then I basically close up my programs and then I pack up and go. So this is like a routine uh, for beginning my day on a good note and then ending my day and wrapping it up on a good note and being prepared for the next day. So that covers workflows. Um, next is self-care. So self-care is something that you might neglect. Like I'm guilty of it myself, especially in our current state where we're in a pandemic. Um, but if you don't take care of yourself for an extended period of time, it could lead to a lot of complications. 
So by taking care of yourself, uh, it, base, it helps you because you'll be happier overall and then also increases your work performance because if you're happier and everything's like working optimally, um, you don't have any like headaches or all that other stuff. And um, you'll be able to work more efficiently and it helps you prevent burnout because if you're just working, 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 working all the time, I mean, you can only work for so much, um, but ultimately uh, the decision is up to you, uh, how you decide to allocate work versus outside of work. Um, and that goes into like balancing uh, work and outside of work. Uh, on that same note, learn to say no. Uh, if you have a feeling like you're overwhelmed because you have so much to work or so much to do, uh, you have to learn to say no, or at least bring it up as a concern, a way you can say it's like, hey, I would like to help, but currently I have other assignments I need to do to take care of before taking on new assignments. That way the person knows like, hey, you're not just like saying no, you're being like polite about it. Um, and if it's your same boss and they say like, hey, I need you to do this too. I'm like, hey, I'm currently working on this. Should I deprioritize this and work on this instead? Um, and then that way you kind of throw the, the ball back at their court to see what's, what's best. So, yeah. And then you should always like reflect on your situation, like ask yourself, am I happy in my current role? This is probably more if you're like already full-time employee. If you're an intern, then you already know like you're only there for the summer or the year or whatever. Um, but then you'll still reflect to see if this is a company you still want to work at after you graduate. But if you're already graduating and you're working there, you should like ask yourself, is, are you happy? Um, if not, then what's in your control that you can change to help increase your happiness? So that might be like, hey, I want to change my project. I want to change my team. I'll bring it up to my manager. Hey, you know what? Like, I don't really like this site. The site works on like these kinds of things where this other site works on this other thing that I find more interesting. Uh, so for example, like Northrop at the site that I'm in, they work on satellites, but then other Northrop sites work on aircraft. And like, let's say like, oh, I want to switch to aircraft. So what I would do is like tell my manager, I could look at our internal um, job boards and then start applying. Um, just focus on what's in your control instead of just thinking like, oh, this sucks. Like, I hate what's going on currently in my life. Just be proactive about it, how you can get yourself out there or improve your situation. And then lastly, like take action. So that pretty much wraps it up uh, for my presentation. Um, Ultimately, it might feel like it's scary, like career. You don't know if you're doing it right. It's like a long journey. People have been working for like 30 plus years and you only have like single digit years if at like less than a year working. So you don't really know if you're doing it right. Um, that's like something I still think about to this day. Um, and I've been working for four, four and a half years now. Um, but uh, not knowing everything also makes it exciting because you don't really know everything. So you, there's surprises, good and bad, that may arise. Uh, but as you go through your journey, you'll come across people. Uh, some people you'll see for maybe only a project. Some people you might see for your whole career and be your mentor. Um, some people will be mentees. Uh, we're all on this journey through our career together in some way. Everybody's on their own, but we cross paths. Um, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to like take action on where you wanna head out or head towards. Uh, what do you wanna do for your career? Um, be more proactive about it um, and then try your best because ultimately that's all you can do. Uh, just try your best in whatever you do and then be your best. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thanks uh, and uh, I guess I'm doing like a shameless plug, but I started a podcast with my brother because I like talking about stuff that I learned. Uh, so we started a podcast recently um, that kind of talks about like this stuff, productivity, mindset, and it's geared towards like college students and early career professionals. Um, and it, we're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So if you're interested, we only have two episodes at the moment, but we're planning to record more this, this week. Um, and it's just a way for me to like share what I learn, what my, and then my brother share what he learns. And then that way it's easier to access uh, more people instead of 
individual like presentation by presentation basis. Uh, so with that said, um, that pretty much wraps up my presentation. Um, and if you guys have questions, uh, let me know. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I had a question on mentor mentees. So I was wondering how do you pick uh -huh. your mentor? Um, I could tell you from my experience so far, it's, I have like a mechanical engineer mentor and then like a systems engineer mentor. Um, it kind of happened naturally because they're in my project. Sometimes if you're a really hard worker, sometimes some people like that and they'll like take you under their wing. That's kind of like the case for me. Um, going back to like when I first was, where it was introduced to my team, I talked to a system architect um, and I was like, cause he was the one that, he basically had this like vision of this thing that he wanted to do. And I was a mechanical engineer responsible for designing like the mechanical aspects of it. So I had a bunch of questions. Like I didn't know Creo, I didn't know exactly what he wanted. Um, and so I asked him like, hey, what's the best time for me to reach you and prefer method? And he told me like 5 a.m. in person. And so the next day I showed up at 5 a.m. And it's like, um, I don't know, like, like I said, I had imposter syndrome. So I wanted to make sure like I do my best. And um, I guess he liked that a lot. And after a while, like he basically would always like tell me about different things. Uh, for my mechanical engineer mentor, it kind of just worked out because after like, I don't know, maybe two months into the project, then they brought in a mechanical engineer that became available and he was, he had more experience. So he had like 20 plus years of experience. So he would, he like naturally just like became my mentor because I was interacting with him a lot. And then we would talk a lot about mechanical design, but then it would evolve into like general career advice. Um, so it's, it's like natural. So it, it comes uh, based on projects from my experience, but then there's also like some companies will do initiatives like uh, they'll pair you with somebody who's been working at the site for a while and you just sign up to that, those programs. Um, and you can get a mentor that way too. It's not something that, it, it's like natural, kind of like similar to how you become friends with someone naturally, it just happens. Thank you. All right. Um, if there's any additional questions, you can say it or put it in the chat. Yes, I have a question. Um, which one of the techniques that you talked about today would you say you still struggle with? For the workflows? Or uh, workflow, organizing, or you know, managing your time. Which one of those would you say you struggle with the most? Uh, organizing, because I didn't know about Para until a couple months ago. So if I had a blank slate, I would uh, implement that from the, the beginning. And that's not to say like I'll continue it because I'm sure like I'll get, if I'm stressed or I need things quick, I'll do just save things to my desktop. But having that structure in place would help me like organize my things because um, sometimes I might refer to things that I was told about when I first started working and like I'd never really use it until like recently. Um, so if I had a system that's already like organized, then it would have been easier to find things that when I first started working. So I started implementing that now and it's helped me out a lot, um, particularly in like the OneNote. Um, I have four different notebooks based on projects, areas, resources, and archives. And um, yeah, it's helped me out a lot for new information that I've been collecting. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions? Uh, yes, I had one. I see. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my question is, what did they put you to work on on your, in your first internship at Northrop? Um, well, at Northrop, I didn't intern. I did a high school program, 
but that was like more of just like administrative work. Um, but when I first started working at Northrop, um, they put me into, they made me in charge of mechanically designing a circuit card assembly board uh, with the electrical team. And it was intimidating because everybody in my team had like 10 plus years of experience. And at the time, a lot of the mechanical engineers got pulled to this big uh, project. Um, so they needed some support. So I had to learn Creo, which I'd never used before. And then I had to interact with um, a lot of the electrical engineers and systems engineers. Um, so that, that's basically what I did first. So it was, it was a big challenge, but I learned a lot. And luckily at our site, um, people are like helpful. So if you have questions, they're willing to like help you out, especially if you're new to the company, because they know like you're not, you don't really know like a whole bunch that's related to like their processes and stuff. Um, is there any additional questions? Uh, I guess another piece of advice that I have, especially if you're still, well, you guys are all students, I'm assuming, um, is create LinkedIn profiles. Um, and you can reach out and create mentors that way. If you're still looking for an internship, uh, having a LinkedIn profile and then maybe reaching out to HR people for those particular companies that you're interested in. Like, hey, I'm a student and I'm interested in working at your company. Uh, is there any advice that you have? Um, so that's a method, since we don't have career fairs in person right now, um, I don't really know how the whole digital or online conferences are, work, go to play, but I mean, LinkedIn's like readily available. So, yeah. Um, any additional questions? I had a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, so like you were saying, like, if you don't know any something like to try and figure it out on your own, <clears throat> um, like at Northrop, are there like books or like, should you just Google something or like, what's the best way to go about like trying to figure something out? Are you saying like a technical perspective? Yeah. Um, so technical perspective, Google was your friend, so. Um, for example, we're working with like a bunch of connectors I've never heard of, and there's like um, different variations of those connectors. So just Google searching YouTube. Um, that's generally my first approach, get some sort of like base knowledge about it. Um, and that way when you ask for help to someone, then you have some talking point to it. Like maybe there's a certain term that you're not familiar with. And from doing Google search, then you become familiar with that term and you can better describe what your question is or what you're stuck on to your team member, whoever you're reaching out to. Hey, Eddie, um, uh, quick, what's quick uh, comment there. Uh, so one piece of advice. Uh, I guess you should I, probably I, introduce yourself, Ivan. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ivan Figueroa, I'm the vice president for the MICE professional chapter. Um, so what I was going to add to, to that conversation is, um, one place, one thing that I know that saved me a lot is to get a hold of like an acronym book. Like a lot of companies and organizations have like an acronym or, or, you know, like an index that has, you know, what abbreviations stand for and things like that. And a lot of times you're going to be in meetings where every three seconds is like some acronym being, you know, thrown out there and you have having no idea what any of these means, you know, having that, uh, that handbook or that list on hand makes understanding conversations so much easier. And sometimes, you know, it, it helps if you sit in in meetings that don't necessarily involve especially at the beginning, I guess, of your internship or job that don't necessarily involve work that you do, but, you know, something that's related to your work. 
um, that helps you put, you know, what you do in context. And especially if there's changes, sometimes those changes might not flow down the, uh, I guess, the communication channel. So you don't want to be that guy who didn't realize that, you know, there was a major change and because it, it wasn't sent out in an email, it, you know, um, ne you never got found out about it. Yeah, so I guess become familiar with acronyms because um, a lot of companies use them, um, especially in the aerospace side of things. Because uh, people will be talking in acronyms. So if you're not familiar with the acronyms, then you're just going to hear like some sentence and then some acronym thrown into place. And it's going to completely like disorient, like, like well, what is he talking about? Like, what's this? Uh, so yeah, that's why like I recommend having a notebook. That way you can write all these down. Um, I know somebody at our site, they created like an Excel spreadsheet and that way they could like search within their spreadsheet for acronyms. Um, so whatever works best for you. Any additional questions? Um, I guess show of like, claps or thumbs who has an internship had an internship or is lined up for a full-time offer let's see two three i think I don't know if I'm searching this right. Um, for those that are still looking, um, I recommend, uh, you know, on top of just your stereotypical good grades, you should learn how to market yourself. Um, and what I mean is like, why should they hire you over somebody else? Uh, it's kind of like, I always like to think of like Android and iPhone. They both work really hard. Uh, Google works for their Pixel phone. They work really hard to give all these like features and everything. And then Apple does it the same thing for like the iPhones. But at the end of the day, like a person has to select between one of the two. Um, and a lot of it goes into like marketing, um, how they like, why you should go with their product over the other one. So think of that. And a lot of marketing has to do with storytelling. So you tell stories based on your resume, kind of tells you about yourself, uh, interviewing, kind of talk about yourself. Um, Elevator speech is just like a quick teaser of the story, I guess you can say. Um, so focus on that part. Don't just focus on get good grades and work on all these projects. Like that's the, the package that you're working and building up towards. We have to, you have to sell the package. It's like all these engineers work really hard to design this phone, but it just doesn't like, that's not it. They have to also market it. So you have to like learn both, both those methods. Um, and going back to LinkedIn, um, if you're a student, uh, like I'm doing this on my own time. And reason I'm doing this is because like, I uh, relate to, to like you guys, like looking for a job, if, if you're still looking for a job or internship, um, it's challenging. Um, so because it's like, I'm, I guess I'm empathetic. I don't know what the right word is. Um, I like do this stuff because I want to help you guys out. So on LinkedIn, you can leverage that. And if you reach out to some professionals and like, don't just like randomly add them, add like a, a message to that note. Like when you request uh, to connect, say, hey, I'm a student. I noticed you work at X company. I really want to work there. I was wondering any advice you can give me to help increase my chances. Um, that would help out a lot. Um, and then that professional may relate because they might think like back then when they're still looking for work um, and they might be more than willing to like help you out and then that could potentially go to like a mentor or that might potentially build up to like hey if you have a resume send it my way and I could like forward it to my manager and then you just like cut the line or go in front of the line instead of going your your stereotypical like apply online and probably like never hear back so yeah I guess that's another piece of advice. Be creative. 
um what's it called um does anyone have like any additional questions or like um questions for maya or eduardo <laughs> If there are no, uh, yes. <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna like promote Maya. So like, Ivan was in Maya's. I was in Maya's. Helped us out. Helped us out a lot. Um, they used to be involved in the mock interviews. Um, that helped me out a lot. Like when I interviewed for my position at Northrop. Um, like after I got hired and I talked to one of the career pan or one of the interview panelists, they're like hey, like you were like really good. Like if we didn't hire you, I would have been pissed. And a lot of it had to do with the fact of like my interviewing and you have to be like confident and also like know what to talk about and not waste your time going on tangents. Just focus on like key information and you can do that from practice. So I would do the mock interview events every year for like three or four years. And that helped me out a lot to the point where I was like, pretty confident if I got to the point where I got an interview that I would get an offer. Um, and that was something that Ivan and myself did for the My Professional chapter. So I think like every year towards like the end, I think this is our first year that we didn't do it because of the whole pandemic thing. Um, but we've done it for the past two, three years. Uh, we would teach you the key stuff, which is like resumes, elevator speech, and then interviews. And then we'd actually like do workshops so like you would actually practice what we just taught um, and people have reached out to us um, and said like hey that was really helpful hey I got a job offer um, so going back to the thing of like be good work on your um, preparing your package but then also learn how to like sell like the package that you just built so yeah um, and then my nice helps out with that I got my first internship at SoCal Gas because of my alumni um, who was like looking for a mechanical or chemical engineer and then reached out to the current MIAS president. And then the MIAS president reached out to me because he knew that I was a mechanical engineer. Um, and then I interviewed and then I got the job. Um, and then a lot of the friends that you uh, still keep in contact with, uh, at least for me personally, it's pretty much just like MIAS people, like Ivan's one of them. Um, so yeah, if you're not involved, I recommend being in a leadership position as that stuff helps out a lot. It's not just your technical stuff. You're going to be dealing with a lot of people and people act differently. Like not everybody has the same personality. So putting yourself in a role where you're collaborating with different people, different, um, disciplines, um, it'll help you out a lot. So yeah, if you're not a leadership position, it'll help you two ways. It'll show a leadership position in your resume and then also would actually help you when you start working because you're gonna be working with a lot of different disciplines. Like I work with electricals, thermal structural systems, um, admins. So it's good practice to become more familiar with that in college. I guess Ivan, did you wanna add anything to that of uh, perks of being involved in Mayans in college and I guess now? Uh, no, I mean, you guys have uh, hit a lot. I know we're going a little bit over time, um, but I did want to add to your last point about um, meeting different people at work and all of that. I remember one time I did have to nearly stop a fight between two and in two engineers. So those those personal skills definitely come into play when you least expect it and, you know being the, the the guy with the cool head can definitely help you and make a good impression among people so yeah definitely work on those uh social and interpersonal skills yeah all right um like i've been said we're a little bit over so if there's no last minute question um feel free to add me on linkedin um if you have additional questions Wait, just my you, full uh, name sorry <laughs> um can you add your linkedin the chat and like um can we can you add your email if anyone has additional questions um i'll put my linkedin my email i don't check it as much um 
let's see. Also, anyone else can add their LinkedIn like networking. <laughs> Uh, so I put my link to my profile on the chat and I even did as well. So if you have questions, LinkedIn is, I guess, my preferred method of communication. Um, so yeah, feel free to send me a request and just say, uh, put a note, I think it'd be good practice. Don't just connect requests. That's cool. Um, we want to say thank you so much for um, being the guest speaker. We appreciate you. You're very inspirational, and Ivan too. Um, so yes, <laughs> I hope um, both of you guys or everyone have like a nice day. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, uh, thanks yes. for uh, attending, and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. And if you have questions, just like I said, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. All right, take care you guys.